Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. Something a little different today since I'm actually away on holiday right now at this very minute, somewhere out at sea enjoying a chocolate espresso martini on a deck chair beside a pool. I recently backed a Kickstarter project for a bunch of 5th edition monsters called Limitless Monsters. Uh, published by LimitlessAdventures.com, on page 19 there is an entry for A Chosen of Lou. This is for the people who are on my Discord channel, and I was having a chat about possibly turning this into a player character class, but in this uh, video I'm going to talk about the them as a monster more than anything. Now this relates directly to Irish folklore and the pantheon of Ireland. Lou the sun god, jack of all trades, trickster and divine exemplar of kingly virtues, victory over the monstrous and primordial Balar of the One Eye, the Fomorians and tamer of the savage wilds, custodian of humans, a god of light, strength and cunning in the face of adversity. I also wonder if the Chosen of Lu are inspired by the comic book strip Slain from 2000 AD comics, most famously illustrated by the legendary Simon Bisley. Essentially, the fey powers and primal nature fuel the berserk rage of these barbarian warriors. Like a fey packed warlock or a wild shaping druid of the moon circle, they funnel primal energy into their body as a battle lust and raw emotional force which drowns their brains in angry juice. A magical transformation overtakes them and their bodies contort horrifically, bones cracking, sinews ripping, eyes popping out of their sockets or swelling out of their head, jaw and tongue distended, arms and legs grotesquely swollen with disproportionate muscle, twitching and writhing like angry snakes beneath crawling skin, veins often breaking the skin itself and spraying blood into the air. They sprout bristly hair, claws and fangs. They grow from medium to large size and can no longer, dis you can't even distinguish them um, what they originally were or can they distinguish friend from foe. The transformation by a chosen is called the Ryastrad, otherwise known as the Warp Spasm in Slain comics, during which they grow to large size as one standard action, once per day for one minute. It triples their strength based weapon dice, so they would make two great axe attacks normally doing 1d12 plus 4 damage. Now they do 3d12 plus 4 slashing damage, and have advantage on strength based saves and skill checks, plus they regenerate 10, 10 hit points every round and have horrifically violent appearances, barely recognisable as beings they were before. The Chosen of Lu may be among the uh, Uthgart barbarian tribes, they may be associated with their other primal powers, Fey Lords of Battle. They may be divinely chosen by Malar, Kord, Tempest, or Bane. They may be touched with the blood of Grumsh. They may be venerated by a circle of moon druids, a fated warrior who was born under signs and portents. Chosen of Lu have a justified reputation as unstoppable forces of destruction, and their fury is pure and savage. They literally dive headlong into the heart of battle and then unleash the primal power within them which erupts in screaming, roaring hulks of blade, blood, massive muscles and gore, their oversized blades sweeping through the enemies like the scythe of death itself, limbs and heads flying about in a cloud of blood and steaming innards. Seeing this monster cutting through your allies like a hot knife through butter is enough to make even a stalwart veteran turn tail and run from the field. Irish folk lore uh, is... A tale told, it's full of tales of legendary warriors who have weapons that lust for death. Lu's spear, the god Lu, was said to fly through enemies on its own, its blood thirst so dreadful and relentless that it could only be stopped by soaking its razor -ship sharp head in freshly crushed, crushed poppy seeds to basically put it to sleep. But they are not battles, um, they're not in battles every day, the Chosen of Lug, nor every week, nor even every month. The life of a Chosen of Lug is brief events of legendary terrifying violence, and the veneration idol and idolation that comes after, as whatever or whoever they said they were fighting for heaps praise and honour on them. But the Chosen care little for this hero worship, all the inevitable lust for power that shines in the eyes of those who saw them in battle. While many Chosen immerse themselves for a time, and the wealth and excess that their fame provides, they can no, not linger in luxury. They're conduits of the raw power of the Feywild. They are subject to mercurial, mercurial moods. They could be easily provoked to lethal violence, and they won't just have a little bit to drink and eat. They will guzzle the strongest brews and chomp their way through half a roasted boar. They will consume fistfuls of hallucin hallucinogenic mushrooms and run ranting and raving through the woods, naked and wild. 
They feel the currents of the earth, they can see the flow of the ley lines, they are drawn to the siren call of ancient standing stones, they converse with the spirits of the powerful dead, they are visited in their dreams by fey gods and are drawn into the politics and conflicts of the fey world as much, if not more so, than the mortal world. They may sit down at a banquet of fairies and slip sleep after for a decade, returning to the world that thought they had died. Some chosen of Luth can see the invisible, some are resistant to all magic from friend or foe, and often seek out and slaughter practitioners of the arcane arts in the mortal world. They may shun any sort of industry or technology, even smashing apart a crossbow as some sort of affront to the natural world. They tend to collect magnificent and legendary weapons, particularly great axes, which, even if not enchanted, are wicked instruments of death, eagerly sought after, as much for who used them in battle as for what they actually are. Some are adamantine and seem permanently slick with blood. Others are bright and luminous star metal, fallen from the sky on the night of the Chosen's birth. Others are simple, sturdy weapons of great size that soak up the spirit of some powerful Fomorian lord that had its life ended with the blade sunk deep in its skull. The Chosen have an empathy with the natural world shared by druids and rangers, Wild predators tend to respect this as no ordinary humanoid. It is the eye of the storm, the dark shadow that falls before a tidal wave, the howl of the tornado. They steer clear of the Chosen unless called, and it's not unknown for a Chosen to ride a dire bear or fight alongside a pack of winter wolves. One on one, the Chosen has a minimum armor class of 15, without the need of any sort of artificial armor or protection. They have at least 100 hit points. Their strength and constitution is best described as inhuman. If they need to lift something, they keep straining and heaving until the thing is off the ground, even if it contorts and warps their body in the process. They never stay down unless they are in pieces, and those pieces are full of a combination of poison, arrows, and possibly on fire. They have a warrior's dexterity and are otherwise average, except for a charisma that suffers due to them being, them being essentially unrelatable, weird, and more than a little psychotic. Chosen don't retire, they don't settle down, they are fated to either die horrifically on top of a mountain of bodies, or collapse into a blood-soaked throne of skulls, a grisly monument to ultra-violence. For whatever world you put them in, they will be known by bards, particularly those who sing of the songs of battles and heroes. The skulls of the frost giants even pay, tri pay tribute to the chosen. In fact, there have been quite a few furbolgs who were blessed or cursed with this fate. Certainly, if you can, track down some of those slain comics and enjoy them as I did, or, well, I never managed to read all of them. It's on my bucket list. Definitely a rich source of inspiration for some mythic adventures and the otherworldly feel of the dark side of the Fae in your fantasy world. Thanks for listening. I'll be back with more for you very soon. Just a reminder, if you've not subscribed already, feel free to do so. Be sure to hit that notice notification bell as I upload at crazy hours of the morning. For access to all the scripts and occasional special offers, consider becoming a patron of the channel um, on Patreon for a minimum of just $1 a month. Join the community on Discord server and say, come say hi. If your artwork appeared in this video, please let me know. I'd love to promote you. If uh, I'd love to link your website and promote you here. All video game uh, image music content is recorded and edited under fair use rights of, for reasons of uh, commentary, education and social satire. So all, con all content follows the terms and conditions of the Copyright Disclaimer Act under 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, which allows for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, ed scholarship, education and research, just in case you ever wondered. Thanks for listening everybody, I'll catch you again soon.